Moving on to 4-7, Introduction of Coordinate Proof. Today we're going to position figures in a coordinate plane for use in coordinate proofs and also prove geometric concepts by using coordinate proofs. So, what is a coordinate proof? A coordinate proof is a style of proof that uses coordinate geometry and algebra. Common formulas that you use are the distance formula, so if you remember, the distance formula is the big old square root, parentheses, parentheses squared, plus parentheses, parentheses squared with minuses inside. And you put your x's here, and you put your y's here. Also, the slope formula. The slope formula, remember, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Also, area formulas, like the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. The area of a rectangle is base, time, or length, base times height or length times width. Um, the area of a circle is pi r squared, etc. Um, also, the midpoint formula. Remember, the midpoint formula is um, x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So those are some common formulas that you might see in coordinate proofs. So there are a couple of ways to help, to, but first to, you need to place and figure inside a plane, uh, inside a coordinate, coordinate plane. And a lot of times it's not drawn on there for you, so you have to do it yourself. And here are some strategies for placing those figures in the coordinate plane. We'll do some examples right down here. So uh, using the origin as the vertex, like up here, that's this first one, using the origin as the vertex. If I wanted to draw a triangle uh, with side lengths C and D, um, if I'm using the origin as a vertex, I could place my triangle here. So we have this rectangle here, just like so, and I have side lengths of C and D. So my points are 0, 0. This point here would be 0, D. This point here would be C, 0. And this point here would be C, D. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to center the figure at the origin. So if you have a square, for example, and you want to put the square at the origin, put the center of the square at the origin. And if the whole side length is 2x, then that means that this half of it is just x, right? That half is x, that half is x, this length is x, that 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 length is x. So when we are trying to find our points, this point here would be xx. This point here would be x negative x because it goes down. This point over here would be negative x negative x. And this point up here would be negative x x. Okay? Um, if we are going to center a figure at uh, the side of the figure at an origin, you could have it something like this. And I just did um, actual numbers for this one. So if you center a side of the figure at the origin, you could have it something like this, where um, I have 4 and 3. So if this is 4 or 2 and 2, and this is 1.5 and 1.5, so then my points would be 2, 0 to 1.5. This one over here would be negative to 1.5 and negative to 0. Okay? And lastly, if I use uh, the axes as sides of the figure, that's kind of like what I did up here. Uh, if I have a right triangle, I could draw it like so, where I'm using the axes as the part of the right angle there. And if I have side lengths of A and B, then my points are 0, 0, A, 0, 
and 0B. So all of these work. I'm going to tell you my favorites. This one up here is a favorite, and this one here is a favorite. To me, those two are the easiest ones for the most part to use. It kind of depends on the proof, but for the most part, those are the easiest ones. So let's do a coordinate proof. I have a coordinate proof here all ready for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a look at what we want to prove. So we want to prove the area of DBC. Now we don't have a D yet, we need to find it first. So that'll be our first step. So when we're doing coordinate proofs, it's not like a two column proof. Um, what we do is we use formulas and such to prove things. So if I want to find D, okay, and I'm told that D is the midpoint of AC. So that means I need to use the midpoint formula, okay? So the midpoint formula, remember, are the X's uh, added together and divided by zero. So we have zero plus four divided by two and six plus zero divided by two. So that would be four over two, which is two, and six over two, which is three. So my D point is here at 2, 3. And I just proved that by using the midpoint formula. So now I want to find the area of DBC. So let's go ahead and draw a line connecting. And I want to find the area of this triangle right here. Okay, so let's find the area of triangle DBC. Okay, so remember area is 1 half base times height. So my base is here, which is one, two, three, four. So that's one half of four times, and my height is here. So that's one, two, three. One half of four times three, which this reduces to a two. Two times three is six units squared. So my area of DBC is six units squared. Now I also want to find the area of ABC, triangle ABC, so find area of triangle ABC. Again, one half base times height. So ABC is the big one here. So uh, I'm going to go one half. My base again is this. So that's one, two, three, four. My height this time is up here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. These cancel. Two times six is 12 units squared. So my, what I want to prove is that the area of DBC, so area triangle DBC equals one half area of triangle ABC. So let's see if we did that. So what is the, what is area of triangle DBC? Area of triangle DBC is six, so that equals one half the area of triangle ABC is 12. Okay, and so you'll see that 6 does equal 6, so we did it right. Okay, thanks for watching.